everyone, welcome to another Mosh Connect video. My name is Robin and I'm the Naturalist Center Manager here at Mosh. And today I'm joining you from the Florida Naturalist Center itself. Today is National Frog Jumping Day. And today we're going to be discussing how do frogs jump? Frogs have very strong muscles, but that's not the only thing that helps them jump. It's actually their super stretchy tendons. Tendons are what attach muscle to bone. So with their super stretchy tendons, when a frog is getting ready to jump and crouched down, much like the skeleton of a American bullfrog, as you can see, he's all crouched down. So when a frog is in this position, their muscles contract and get smaller, while their tendons stretch and get longer. This allows energy to be locked and loaded into the muscles and the tendons. So when a frog has collected all of the jumping energy it needs, the tendons attached to the ankle bone actually blast off the frog for jumping. And then they do their great leap. A frog can actually jump 44 times its body length. So imagine if you were six feet tall, standing at one end of a football field, you could probably jump to the other end of the football field if your leg muscles and tendons were just like a frog's. That's amazing. It's crazy because a frog's leg muscles make up one quarter of their entire mass. As you can probably imagine, seeing this bullfrog and how long its legs are. I mean, look at how long those are. And then muscles attached to those tendons, attaching to the bones. And so you can imagine why their leg muscles make up a quarter of their mass. It's crazy. In today's video, we have a special guest. Her name is Evan, and she's our maker space coordinator here at MOSH. And she's going to be teaching us how to make an origami jumping frog. I've never made an origami jumping frog, so I'm gonna be joining you along for this video. And it's gonna be really fun. So let's bring Evan in. So I have Evan here, she's our maker coordinator, and we are going to be learning how to make origami frogs out of paper. So, yes, we are. Evan. So just in case you don't know, origami is the ancient Japanese art of paper folding. So like Robin said, we're going to need to start with some paper. I just have here a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of computer paper. But as you will see, the first step is to make this square. So I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself though. So you need an eight and a half by 11, just regular piece of printer paper. You need some scissors. Ideally, you'd have a ruler, but your fingers will go ahead and work if you don't have this. Miss um, Robin is going to just be using her fingers. This is actually to make sure we get the best, tightest folds and creases that we can. And there is a really cool, ancient, like legitimate Japanese tool that is used for this that's not a ruler, but I'm going to use a ruler. So we have our ruler, our paper, our scissors. That's all we need to get started. If you would like to decorate your origami frog at the end, you might need some extra materials, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Origami paper is different than computer paper, and one of the biggest differences about it is that it comes in a square already. But we figured not everybody has regular square origami paper just lying around on hand, but most people probably have printer paper. And we can actually do a few quick simple folds to turn our kind of rectangular eight and a half by 11 paper into a perfect square. So let's go ahead and tilt our cameras down so the people can see what's going on on our tables. All right, so in order to turn our rectangular piece of paper into a perfect square that's gonna make our frog, I'm gonna turn it long ways like this and I'm going to fold diagonally. Now, there's one thing that I left off of the materials list that I really should have said, because it's very important, even though it's invisible. And that thing is plenty of patience. You're gonna need patience to do this just a little bit, but a little bit goes a long way, right, Robin? Yep. 
And you're also going to need some really good attention to detail, all right? So I just want to try to show here my fold, there's nothing overlapping, right? This edge of the fold lines up perfectly with my edge of my paper. I don't want anything overlapping. We really need everything to line up pretty perfectly here. Okay, now you're gonna do this a lot in origami, so just get used to it. Completely unfold what you just did. And you're gonna do the same thing in the opposite direction. Now I'm not using my ruler quite yet, just because these are still some really simple folds and it's easy enough to do it with our fingers. It's really kind of near the end that we're gonna really want that ruler so that when all the paper's folded up on itself, you can use it then to really get everything super folded. Okay, so now I have an X on my paper, right? And this is again a really, really common thing with origami. We are making ourselves guidelines here. So the folds aren't making shapes quite yet. We're basically just using the folds to give us a reference of, of where to do the next thing. So we're gonna fold them down again, and then one more time until you have what looks like kind of like a little house maybe. And then you're gonna flip it over so that your folded parts are touching the table. And you're gonna take that top triangle and fold it back. All right, looking very good. Oh. We are, don't worry, there's still folding to do. All right, now we're gonna completely unfold all of that. This is the part I was talking about before where this is basically just guidelines for us. We're gonna cut along that edge. And after we cut that off, we'll have our perfect square and we can begin to make a frog. So now we're all ready to begin our frog fun. Now you still have creases on your paper, right? You still have like an X on your paper. Just ignore that for now. Those creases are actually gonna come in handy, but for now we're gonna ignore them. They're not really guiding us to do anything right yet. What we wanna do now to begin our frog is fold our paper in half long ways or hot dog style for one of those people. And then here's where our lines that we just made to make our square paper do come in a little bit handy again because we need to fold down the top corner. So I'm starting with my left corner and I'm folding it over, lining it up with the edge of my sheet. And then, like I said, you do this a lot in origami, you're gonna unfold that. <laughs> and you're going to go ahead and repeat that step with the other side. So taking my right corner and folding it down. Now remember this whole time you wanna be doing nice tight folds. I probably will have my, have my ruler right here. I'm about to knead it, okay? And then you fold that up again. So you should have like a little square at the top of your rectangle. So we have this little, little X at the top of our paper, right? And what we wanna do now is we want to fold back where the X like at the center of the X, where it intersects. Fold back right in the middle there. And this is where you're starting to notice that your paper, it gets pretty thick the more and more you fold it. And I should say too that traditional origami paper is just a bit thinner than um, what you'd normally get for printer paper. So I'm gonna flip that back around. So now what I'm looking at is the front of my paper and my folded part is on the bottom, touching my table, right? Okay. And then we're gonna unfold that. <laughs> so now what we have at the top of our paper is an X with like a line through it. Now this part is kind of tricky. It's one of those things where all of the lines that you just folded are gonna help you make a really unique shape that you didn't think was possible before. <laughs> And I'm going to do my best to show that here. I honestly have or can have a little bit of trouble with these steps too. So what I'm doing is I'm folding in here. I really want these two lines to kind of touch like this, right? So I'm pinching, do my best to show here, and then putting it down. And then I'm going to flatten this out like that. And I'm going to fold everything down really good. 
So see now what I kind of have is like an arrow shape or maybe like a, a very tall house. And there is, my paper goes like this at the very top where, where it meets. There you go, Robin. Great. Very nice. Okay, and we're gonna have these like kind of like springy folds are at the top still, so not touching our table. Um, okay, we have that. Now what we need to do is take the bottom edge here and we wanna go ahead and fold it up until the bottom edge of our paper is touching the bottom of the little triangle that's on top. I'm running into this issue. I hate it when paper does that when you're trying to fold. Mm -hmm. There we go. So don't be afraid, to, you know, I feel like pro origami people just like keep their paper on the table and they're like, bah, bah, bam, 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 and then it's just built. But <laughs> don't be afraid if you're kind of an amateur origami maker like me, you can like literally pick it up and just really work with it. Make sure every single fold nice and tight, nice and flat too. We don't want any wrinkly designs. So at this point, I'm just going to kind of start smoothing over my folds as I go. I'm not being too crazy about it quite yet. I'm not using too much force, but near the end when we're really finishing all the leg folds, the paper really does become very thick and it really is helpful to have something to smooth with, like, like a ruler or something like that, maybe a paint stick even. Now we have this kind of a shape. We have our sproingy kind of triangle up here, right? And then we have this fold right down here and everything is facing up our folds are facing up still what we want to do now is form the frog's front legs now the best way that i can describe this is with your folds you want to make like a perfect diamond shape on here all right so we're going to fold these little parts up So I just did one of them. All right. And as you can see, when I fold the other one, we're really going to have this lovely kind of perfect diamond right up here. My diamond is a little bit less than perfect, but that's okay too. Part of the appeal of a lot of these is that there is a handmade nature to them, right? We wanted it to look like a machine did it. We just asked an origami machine to make this. All right. So get my finished frog here. Yeah, that looks good. So what we just made are these little parts right here. We're going to be forming his body a little bit more, his mid part. Um, so I think it's easiest personally to like kind of turn it like this because what we need to do now is fold these parts in a little bit. And what we're aiming to do here is get the, these edges to line up here. So we wanna make a line going down like that, if that makes sense, a line down the center. And we're just kind of folding our edges in and uh, trying to achieve that center line. Paper's really adding up, huh, Robin? Yep. So this is the part where if you don't have a scraper tool, like a ruler, you want to really be utilizing your thumbs and uh, your thumbnails, right? The center of your finger can really do a lot to smooth out a line. So go ahead and smooth out all your folds uh, at least two or three times because the tighter these folds are at this stage, the easier our job will be near the end of the video. All right, so I've got all my folds nice and tight here. And this is what I have so far. It's not perfect, but it'll do. We're looking good. I think we're <laughs> on the way to have some really good froggos here. So what we're going to do now is fold this bottom part up until it is touching the center like that. Now I am, you know, striving for perfection, even with all of my patience, even with all my attention to detail, I am getting some very few little overlappy parts where some of my folds are peeking out the bottom of some of my other folds at this point. 
like I'll try to show you here. Ooh, there it is. See, I have like a little bit of overlap right there. We want to avoid that, but if it happens, you know, it's not the end of the world. Yep. Both are getting really, really tight though, or really thick, excuse me. So I am flattening and scraping, especially along all the corners there. And like I said, you can do this with the side of your thumb your, or your thumbnail, some combination of the two. It's almost like a little, it might be from when we made our paper into a square, but there's like a little fold hanging on that's showing us what's, what we're going to do next. And that is fold the corners of our bottom triangle down. Just like that, all right? You do want it to still line up with the bottom here and be nice and straight. So now we have, it's kind of like this. And remember near the very beginning when we were making the triangle for the head and we had to do that thing where we were like kind of like manipulating the folds to be this new shape? Mm -hmm. We do that again with the bottom part here. But I will go ahead and warn you, this one is even a little trickier. So oh, like I said, patient, attention, mm -hmm. the folds will kind of guide you if you let them. So I'm gonna do my best to show here. So I, it was folded in like that. I am just taking this and I'm kind of putting it more vertical like this, you know, like just holding it up a little bit. Is this line in the center here, you need to carefully open that up just a little bit. Sorry, I'm trying to see what I'm doing as well as like make sure that the camera can still see what I'm doing too. So we wanna open that up just a bit, but don't like, you know, go yanking it open and completely unfolding it or anything. So, but as I open it, you can see that my bottom pieces here are starting to turn into like little triangles, right? Can you see that? Yep. And we're gonna take this one and put it in the middle. So you've basically moved what the middle of this was and now you're bringing what was a bottom part into the middle and flattening out your legs like this, right? So now he's like kind of doing the splits almost. Our back legs here are really about to take their final form. This is really similar to how we folded the front legs a little while ago. And you can actually use these, this crease right here to guide you when you fold, when you fold it down. But it shouldn't be exactly on that crease either. What you're going for is as much symmetry between, between this leg and the bottom leg as you can. So you really want them to look pretty similar, have a similar angle, all that good stuff. This step always reminds me a little bit of the uh, origami butterfly that you can make too. It's a little similar. Yeah. And then I am gonna grab my ruler here. So if you do have that tool, this is a good point to be just kind of securing the folds that you've made so far. He's almost looking like a frog, right? But like this is a pretty good frog shape in general. Looks like a frog, yep. but it's not really hop, right? So that is what we're going to be doing from here on out is every, all the steps to make him as boingy and springy as possible and really honor National Frog Jumping Day. We have basically an X, right? With a point at the center. And again, we're gonna fold up right at that center point. Okay? Now, in a perfect world, when I fold things up, my back legs and my front legs would line up perfectly and I wouldn't have any overlapping at all. But this world is far from perfect. So I have a good bit of overlapping, as we can see, this guy is not lined up with this guy, these two points, but that's okay, man. Your frog is still gonna be really cute. He's still gonna jump really well. This bottom part here is what we're gonna fold next. And you wanna fold this halfway down. Um, and this is really tricky, like this paper is really, really thick. So do your best. A little situation that looks like this, okay? And then, 
Now I want to show you the side of my frog too because this is really where he gets his jumpiness from. It'll be this part that does the jumping. So the better your folds are in this part, the better he'll jump. And if you find that he's not jumping that well, you might have to just like redo this fold and kind of play around with that. I'm just kind of doing a, a once over on all my folds because at this point we are technically done, but craftsmanship is important. So we're gonna make sure that our creases are really good here so our frog looks really nice. And here we have it, a little jumping frog. The oh. way that him is with one finger on his booty here. <laughs> Skirts along. Your optional materials are going to be whatever you like to color with. Markers, crayons, colored pencils. I use colored pencils. And you can color your frog just a straight up green, like I did kind of a springtime green. But you can also look at pictures of frogs on Google and try to match your color scheme to your favorite actual species of frog. I also added googly eyes just because I really think that everything in the entire world can be improved if you add googly eyes to it. I have googly eyes on some of my lights. <laughs> um, I also added this little pipe cleaner tongue here. All I did was curl that around a pencil and that's how I got this kind of like spirally shape and then I just glued everything on. The pipe cleaner, the eyes, they add a little bit of weight to everything. Mm. So it will affect the jump just a little bit. See? But I have gotten it to where I can do perfect flips with him too. So sometimes they make the jumping worse. Sometimes they make it like just that much cooler and you can do like little tricks with an origami frog. But I love these little origami jumping frogs. They're a perfect fidget. I made one for my boyfriend. He keeps it on his desk at work when he goes into his desk at work, which hasn't been that much lately. But when he is in the office, it's a fun little thing to play with. If you're like me and you need a fidget for 90% of the social things that you do, this is a pretty cool little fidget and you can just make it out of paper. I love origami, I love frogs. And so I love the origami jumping frog. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more Mosh Connect content, go to themosh.org slash educate slash connect. We have tons of content on there that's really exciting and interesting to watch. We'll hope to see you soon. Bye! Mosh Connect relies on support from our community. If you like what you just saw, please consider donating at www.themosh.org and give us a like on social media at Mosh Jacks so you can stay connected.